Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. No people come to Shannon's place. Cash register is one big disgrace. The money that lies within the till could possibly change one dollar bill. Why the applause, sailor? Because I like Calypso songs, and because I like the way King Moses sings them. You know, you're a lucky man, Slate. You get your business troubles set to music. Yeah, it delights me. Saturday night and no customers. What's a man supposed to do on a Saturday night? You're a big boy now. But if you don't know, King Moses will tell you. Don't worry about it, Mr. Slate. It was the same no business last year when the rainy season came. Mr. Slate? Well. Well, what? Here comes a man who's liable to start a fad. He takes out a girl on Saturday night. Yeah, smile like you can hardly bear the fun you're having, sailor. Good evening, sir. Table for two on the corner, mister. Hold the menu till I whistle. Lady's not hungry. How are you, baby? No. Not thirsty either, are you, baby? No. See what I tell you, mister? Uh, don't bother, I'll find myself a place. Yeah, don't forget to whistle. Everything all right, baby? You happy? If I were dead, I'd be happy. Oh, baby, Dolores, baby. Oh, no, no. Uh, come on, sit down. That's my girl. Take your hand away from me. You don't tell Vic what to do, remember? Remember? Uh, yes. I remember. Well, now, uh, that's good. Real good. Fine. All right. You said you wanted to talk to me before you gave me the papers. Talk. If I give them to you, if You're I... starting off all wrong. There's no if. Just give me the papers and you can talk your head off. I'll listen and smile and nod anything you want to say. How do I know? If I give them to you, how do I know everything will be all right oh, then? Oh, baby, baby. How do I know? You don't know anything at all. I, you're, you're hurting my arm. You're hurting shut me. Shut up. Oh. Told you to shut up. I haven't whistled yet, mister. Those welts you're raising in the lady's arm hurt my eyes. Outside, buster. By yourself. Out. You want to play? You want to play? Huh? Well, good. Fine. <laughs> Okay, I'll get up. Where'd the girl go? Girl I came in here with. Where'd she go? She couldn't wait. She left. You know something, mister? You just don't know what you did. Captain. Now, did you bring him? No. I gave you an order. Look, I've taken enough of those from you and for you. With a quarter of a million dollars shining down on us, you'll take more, won't you, Vic? Watch it. Yeah, Captain. All right. You can come in now. Not a ship's empty except for you. You like it here alone, Captain? Havana within kissing distance, you stay here alone? I gave the crew shore leave. They can kiss it for me. They can do other things with their mouths. Like talk. You talk, but you didn't come back with anything. Something got away. A spoonful of Havana girl, and you couldn't take away from her what was bought and paid for. Maybe you ought to talk to the ship's doctor, huh? I told you. A guy named Slate Shannon lost it. You'll tell me how, huh? I had my hands on him. 
girl got girlish about it. Began to think up reasons why she shouldn't give them to me. I tried to persuade her I was going good, too. And this slate Shannon wrapped your knuckles because he's a hero. I never knew you were a hero worshiper, Vic. The things I don't know about you. Like to try myself, Captain? I can give you the address with a recommend. You're slime, Vic. Isn't that what you are? Answer me! That's what I am. You let a quarter of a million dollars run through your fingers. That makes you slime. You already said it once. I got a fortune in opium in the hole. In the barrio in Havana, we can get a quarter of a million dollars for it. You know how it is with all that money? Yeah, I heard. I get hungry for nice things, expensive things, things I haven't had for a long time. I want those things, Vic. That's why we brought this tub all the way from Macau. I explained it to you. Shannon, stop me. We can't unload all that stuff because I haven't got a bill of lading. Because you didn't get it for me. Just a bill of lading that says I'm carrying canned apple juice. That's too much to ask, Vic. I'll get it. Sure you will. Vic! Sure you will. <laughs> How many times have I told someone to fix this desk drawer? The last man you had in here to fix that drawer told you he'd have to demolish the desk to get it open. You should have taken the three dollars he offered you for it. I've got a pipe in that drawer. You've got other pipes. I know, but somebody gave me this pipe. Did she break it in for you first? Ah. Uh, it won't open, Slate. It never does. Answer the phone. I'll bet it won't open this time either. Hello? Who? Mr. Slate Shannon? He's trying to open a drawer right now. Can I help you? Oh, sure. Yes, he's here. Slate. Who is it? The girl with the welts. You'd better talk to her. Yeah. Slate Shannon speaking. Please bring the envelope to me. What? The envelope I gave you. I must have it. What are you talking about? What envelope? When were you fighting? I put an envelope in your pocket. Huh? What'd you do that for? Oh, there's no time, please. You have the envelope. The envelope with the papers in it. Now, wait a minute. I'll see. Uh-uh. I'm sorry. No envelope. I put it there in your coat pocket. Oh, please, it must be there. Oh, why didn't you say coat? Bail on my coat hanging on the chair over there. That faker. She sounds that excited, and all she wants from you is your dry cleaning. Here, there's an envelope in one of the pockets. All right. There's an envelope here. Thanks. Hello? Yes. Okay, I've, I've got your envelope. Uh, what's important about it? Bring it to me, please, please. There's no time. Please bring it to me. Now, just take it easy. Where do I bring it? To Avenida Presidente, number 18, the end of the hall. Well, who do I ask for? For me, Dolores Quito. Oh, please, please hurry. Right away, Dolores. You're going to see Dolores right away? This minute. Help me with my coat, Slate. Open your mouth, Mesa. You care for guy to tour through many charming places in Havana? I am charming guy. No thanks, Chico. You have convinced me. Instead of five dollars, I will take you to such places for only three dollars. Senorita, talk it over with your man, please. He does not know bargains. Yes, sir, right. Here, Chico, here's a bill. Pretend we've been to all those charming places. Gracias, gracias. Golly, Jay, a buck. Thanks, doll. So long, suckers. Why, you? <laughs> Come back here, you phony. How long have you been in Havana, sailor? Maybe too long. Why do you stay here, Slate? A man like you could have the world on a string with pretty things dangling from it. I've had it. I don't like it. But this you like. The phonies, the beggars, the two-bit tourists that hire out your boat, your hotel, you. Errand boy to a beaten-up girl. That's what fascinates you about Havana? You want to know, huh? No. And I'll tell you. Sometimes I get hungry for something. I don't always know what it is. But Havana comes up with it every time. Now you know. That's what I thought. That's why I didn't want you to tell me. Right, here you go, number 18, end of the hall. After you, sailor. Thanks. Slate. Now, let's go. 
They killed him. They killed him. Killed who? My, my husband, Senor Quito. He opened the door of our house to them. They shot him down. Like a street dog, he lies there. Who did it? I do not know. I did not see them. They ran away through that door in the back. They ran away. They did not show me their faces. Dolores Quito, she lives here? With my daughter. Where is she? In the barrio. She told me, do not be afraid, mamacita. I go to the barrio to hide there, she said to me. She should be with me, with her father, not in the barrio. Here, senora, let me help. When you're through helping her, Sheila, take this envelope home. Put it in the desk. You can help, too. I am. I'm going to find Dolores for her in the barrio. Dolores Quito, know where she is? You are not needed here, senor. I'll look. Do not try, senor. Dolores Quito is unknown to us. You look for something, maybe, eh, senor? Dolores Quito. I am Alicia. You tell me where she is? I am Alicia. But well, come inside. I will show you there is no one here but Alicia. You uh, dance with Alicia? Huh? Eh? Dolores Quito, they told me maybe... No sabe, no sabe nada. Got a light, mister? Sure. Well, we better get in this doorway out of the rain. Yeah, that'll be good. Here. Hey, hey, you're the guy. That's right, I'm the one. He's yours, Captain. Yeah. You did good, Captain. Real good. Fine. Back to Bold Venture and our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Mr. Shannon, he go to Barrio, the place of danger where the lights are low. A fella, he bang on Mr. Shannon's head. Mr. Shannon, he think pavement is new bed. Slade Shannon, yeah, he... Don't rub it in, King. Taylor? Uh-huh? Give me that envelope out of my desk. I want to see what's in it that makes me bleed. It's not in the desk. The drawer won't open, remember? I don't care where it is. Just get it. It's in the safe. I'll get it, Lady Sailor. Left 23... Right, 14. Shh, not so loud, King. Don't get excited, Slate. The only thing in that safe beside the envelope is a necktie. Say, I've never seen you in a necktie. How do you look? Nifty and dapper. Here's the envelope, Mr. Slate. Thanks. I don't get it. What is it? Bill of lading for the steamship Capricorn. Look. It says they're supposed to unload six cases of apple juice in Havana Harbor. Apple juice? What do you mean, apple juice? Apple juice means apple juice. What else does apple juice mean? Well, I don't know, but I'll bet it's the first time in history anybody ever got beat up for apple juice. Mm. I think it's a more clever thing, sailor. When I come back, you can tell them to me. Put the envelope back in the safe, King. You going out? Sure. The rain stopped, the moon's out, the sea's calm. Who knows? I might find me a steamship. Girl as pretty as you could go very far in the world. Couldn't she, Vic? Very far. Please. Please take me home. I am no good to you. No, you're not, baby. Gentle, Vic. Gentle. A girl like Dolores with a nice family and all. 
A nice port inspector for a father, a man who can forge bills of lading. You should be gentle with a girl like that, Vic. You're right, Captain. Wait till you see how Vic can be with a girl when he puts his heart in it. It'll surprise you, Dolores. Vic? You'd like to go home, wouldn't you, baby? Yes, yes. Sure you would. But you know something? It's going to be lonesome for you. No father. Oh, you killed him. Killed <laughs> uh, Just you and your mother. It's hardly enough for a pretty girl like you. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. You know what else, baby? You shouldn't have double-crossed us. You should have given me that bill of lading like a soft little kitten. You shouldn't have run when you saw us coming to your house to ask you for it. Then maybe Daddy could still put his arms around his little girl. You understand how it is, don't you, Dolores? If we paid your father for the forgery, you would have given it to us. But you didn't. Now, where is it? I, I do not know. I, I lost it. Oh, she lost it. Yeah, I feel sorry for you, kid. You shouldn't have done that. Now, the things that can happen to a girl in Havana without a mother to look after her just makes my heart bleed. You wouldn't lost my mother. Oh, we can arrange it, baby. Easy, real easy. Like pie. I gave them to Senor Shannon. He has the bills of lading. Ask him for them. You'll ask him, Dolores. How about yourself? You'll go to him and say, Senor Shannon, the captain wants his bills of lading. Take them to him. For your mother, you'll do it. Huh, baby? Yes, yes. Take the pretty girl ashore, Vic. I beg your pardon. What can I do for you, miss? I want to see uh, Senor Shannon. He's gone. Where? Where he is is where. I don't know. Miss Sailor, she here. Miss Sailor's standing over there under the fan. Maybe she can help you. Thanks. Is your name Sailor? That's right. Hot, isn't it? I'm looking for Senor Shannon. The feeling's mutual. Oh, please, I have got to see him. Why? Listen to me. No, you listen to me. About five hours ago, you came in here. And since then, there's been nothing but trouble. Slate gets beaten up. A man gets shot to death. My father. Oh, that's right. I forgot I'm sorry. If you're truly sorry, you will help me. I didn't say anything about that. I just said I was sorry. Senor Shannon has an envelope. It is mine. I must have it. Now I have to be sorry again. I can't give it to you. You do not understand. Right now, I only have to understand one thing. Slate Shannon is somewhere along the Havana waterfront, looking for whatever he has to find. He's going to find it, and he's going to do what he has to do. I'm not going to take a chance of messing it up. Sorry. No envelope. They will kill me. They will murder again. No, no. Nobody's going to hurt you. King Moses will see to that. You stay here. Those men. You do not know what they are. Slate does. That's more important. My father. Dead. My mother. Here, sit down. I'll get you a drink of water. King Moses. Yes, Miss Sailor. Did you ever see a Saturday night like this? Ahoy, Capricorn! Ahoy! Ahoy! Slate Shannon coming alongside in powerboat, Paul Venture. I'll throw your line! Okay, secure. Up the ladder, mister. I'll give you a light. Ah, uh, thanks. Now, where's the captain? You're looking at him. Well, I'm just making a social call, Captain, so you can put your gun away. Think so? It's very interesting. Vic! Don't try, Shannon. I can kill you now, but I'll enjoy it more later. Is you a ship, Cap? Yeah, what do you want? Look what the sea washed up, Vic. Well, what do you know? That's what I like about them, Captain. Every place you turn, there's Shannon to rub noses with. The cap does your work for you, huh, Beck? Because you can't handle it alone. Oh, yeah. I remember. You can't. Let's try the dance once more, Shannon. Just you and me. And with a cap holding a gun on me, I'm ashamed of you, Beck. You think I'm crazy or something? Maybe you can dance later, boys. All I need now are the bills of lading. Dolores told you to bring them, and you brought them, huh, Shannon? Dolores? Uh-huh. 
My own idea. Fast thinker, huh, Captain? My heart goes out to fast thinkers like you. So it was your own idea, huh? We admire you for it. Now hand them over. Well, I'd uh, sure like to oblige you fellas. You, you admiring me and all, but I can't. You don't say. Like I said, I'd like to help you out, but I got to thinking. I thought to myself, now what is there about six crates of apple juice that's worth a man's life? That's not counting the pistol whipping you gave me, Cap. Then I thought, now this must be a kind of apple juice a man could grow real fond of. The fast thinker wants a cut, Captain. Yeah, how'd you guess? How much? Depends. How much is apple juice bringing these days? A quarter of a million dollars in round figures. Yeah, that's pretty round for apple juice. How much? Oh, I'm not greedy. You boys did all the work. Ten grand. You named it. Now the bills of waiting. Well, I told you I haven't got them with me. I sure wish I had, fellas. Where are they? Back at my hotel. Let's see, you're uh, three miles out. It took me 20 minutes to get here. Uh, well, you know, I'll be back, oh, say, an hour. But you're not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes it tough. Well, what are we going to do, fellas? You'll think of something. Oh. Say, you got to ship the shore phone. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we like to say hello to the folks back home. Well, then it's easy. You'll tell us. All I got to do is send a message to the Port Authority to Sailor Reb. Uh, that's Mr. Val. You saw her at my place, remember, Vic? I'll never forget her. Yeah. That's all I got to do. Simple, fellas. Simple. But we'll do it for you. You'll word it for us, huh, Shannon? My specialty. Tell her to get the envelope out of my desk drawer. A plain manila envelope, bulky. Tell her to hire a boat and bring the envelope here to me and the Capricorn. Because I need it in a hurry. You can fill in your position. You'll tell her that? Uh, just like you said, word for word. Yeah, it sounds like your girl got here fast, Shannon. Good for our side, huh? It's always been good for us. It's getting better for you. Yeah, you don't know what I can do with those ten Gs. Like what? Oh, I'm going to put in a parquet floor so you can come and dance on it. You really think you're going to see that crummy hotel of yours? You changing your mind about something, Captain? I thought we were buddies. So we're buddies. And I'll see my hotel again. We'll float you past it. You'll be face down. There she is, Captain. Leave her here. Get back on deck, Vic. Hi, fellas. You bring the envelope, sailor? Well, that's what you told me to do, wasn't it? I like a girl who does what she's told. Well, let's have the envelope. You ask me, Slate. Give it to him. Thanks, Shannon. Put it on the table, young lady. All right. Now, both of you get over there against the bulkhead. Slate. The etiquette when a man with a gun says stand over against the wall is to stand over against the wall. All right, now put your hands behind your neck. Like this or like this? It'll come to you. Not buddies anymore, huh? I'll grieve for you. I'll grieve long enough to tell me why you had to kill that old man. Why? All right, I'll tell you. I paid him some money to forge a bill of lading for me so I could get this stuff into port. He sent his daughter down with it. She got cagey. I had to teach her a lesson. What did he promise you, Slate? Ten grand. That would have been nice. Yeah, it would. Let me take a look at this bill of lading. I've been waiting for it so long. I waited a long time for this piece of paper, a quarter of a million dollars, a quarter of a... Something wrong, Captain? Now, this paper, it's blank. It's a blank. Get him, Slate. Yeah. Yeah. Nice going. (sighs) Sailor, I could kiss you. I knew when the message said get the envelope out of the desk, something was wrong. The desk drawer doesn't open. I switched paper. Say, what was that you were saying? You could kiss me. Hey, Captain, I... What, you... You're all by yourself again, Buster. Come here. That's enough, Slate. What was that you were saying? Oh, I, I said I could kiss you. I lost my head. It couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Slate. Slate. 
Uh huh. It's raining again. Yeah. No customers. Uh huh. Yeah, for two bits, I'd close up the place and take the boat out to the point. I like to see the surf pounding in. Would you take me along? I'd consider it. You've got your two bits, late. I said, you've got your two bits. Ah, yeah, she worked hard for it. I'm tired. Man's got to relax. Let's go, sailor. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture.